and I, I guess the the first thing that came to my mind when I when I saw the film was it it had to have been incredibly liberating for you to play this kind of character. <laughs> It was. It started off as being a mountain that I needed to climb that I was kind of afraid of because, uh, you, you know, as soon as you read somebody who, like, is brushing their teeth and smoking a cigarette at the same time, you think that's really funny, and then you really start working on what kind of self-destructive, like, a, abusive and addictive behavior that is, and you're like, oh, my God, she is a world of mess. <laughs> um <laughs> How do I how do I go into that kind of dark water and then come out with a with it being funny? Um, so so it was well I mean it was a blast but it was also nasty you know it's nasty mm. she's nasty she's not a hopeful loving person which those are kind of maybe easier for me to access. Uh, just in terms of I don't think anybody would accuse me of never being positive, you know, and I really wanted to strip her of that, of any of that veneer that uh, made her appealing, really. Mm-hmm. And, well, do you find – Yeah. I, I was going to ask you to follow up on that. Do you find that the most worthwhile experiences for you in terms of performance uh, are, the, are the experiences where there is a certain fear factor involved? Well, don't get me wrong, there's always some amount of fear involved, <laughs> no matter what it is, Yeah. because yeah. you're, uh, you know, first of all, you're accepting and embracing a part of woman in the world who exists somewhere, mm-hmm. or, you know, at least somewhere enough that you're going to put- portray her, so you want to be truthful, but on the other hand, you're offering something that you um you know you don't want to fail anybody right you, your right. audience i mean forget your co-stars your director you, the writer who wrote the story and then it just keeps going out from there all the people you don't want to let down in the process of of, of doing it for instance like with this particular film is there a moment when you feel like you 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 found it that you have your legs and you reach kind of a comfort zone with it. Oh, the second I had rehearsed and rehearsed, there were a lot of words and we didn't have any time to waste film or money to waste film, and we kind of needed it to be like a play where everything was kind of. I think I had I, I my goal was to have the entire script memorized before I stepped on the plane to go to New York. Mm-hmm. Um. Which is a lot, you know. Which is a lot of words, but how, you know, and then and then the play on the set be what you know keeps bringing it to life. But I I did a lot of uh, rehearsal with my husband. It's in terms of finding how how far how far down I could go, you know, and mm-hmm. he just kept saying further, further, <laughs> further, and I would get so mad, like further, further, take it down, take it down, take it, take it, take it down, take it down, take it down. Really, like, really, really. I remember him saying to me one day, like, really, really, she doesn't care what other people think. Mm-hmm. And to remove all that from even how you speak or walk or talk, like any any of it was um, – was really kind of great. So the first day I thought I, I I might be able to do it was the day that he was like, okay, I think you got there. Um, and it was really raw. Um, so playing in that world, that once I knew how dark it could go, <laughs> um, then I started to find the humor. And when I started to find the humor, then I then I then I knew that I could start to play. Well, is that was that the key for you with this character that she? She honestly didn't care what people thought of her because I'm, I'm thinking that when you're preparing a role, I mean the the instinct must be to to kind of pile on as much information as you can to construct the character. But I think it must be important to kind of simplify it in the end. Um, there were a lot of elements that I uh, that I I mean that was one of them um, in terms of of uh, you know of a of a quality of how you deliver things and what what that feels like to not care is is really you know self loathing of course mm-hmm. so um, you know it's that she's also an addict there are, there are all these things that had to be true for in order for her behavior to um not 
make people wince but make people laugh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, and it just the uglier she got, the funnier she got too. So, mm-hmm. um, and then you can't pull away, you can't shy away from it once you have that kind of curmudgeon uh, born. She's fun, <laughs> you know. She is, yeah, and 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 as as kind of horrific as some of the behavior is there's there's always an element that you relate to as a viewer uh and i well, think that is like all, every girl's worst day and then worse and then mm-hmm. she never comes out of it so i think that's why girls think it's funny yeah because it's well, all kind of how we would like to behave sometimes but we don't and Dee, Dee does it <laughs> And that's well. That's why I think girls giggle. They really like to act like her sometimes. But we're yeah, most of yeah. us too proper, too kind, and too good. Well, this is actually. Uh, I mean, uh, Kelly Overby. She she adapted it from her play. Yes. And and the, the play was called Girl Talk. It, in your experience, is this movie true to the way that girls do talk? Oh my gosh! I mean, girls are as complicated as men in how they speak. I, I, I mean, I don't know if you would walk into a Beverly Hills hair salon and hear women talking like this. So they might say, if I said, "Yeah, this is how girls talk," they, I might really offend some people if I said that. <laughs> uh, but I certainly think this is um, this was definitely a study of Kelly's uh, uh, Kelly and and Kelly in New York and and a world of some very uh lonely girls battling New York City and that's how they talk. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not only written by an actor but it's also directed by an actor. It, it, yeah. th- there has to be some kind of advantage to you in that dynamic as a performer. Well, I mean of course, but there's more than anything. There's so much appreciation. I mean, Kelly, it's amazing. She she wrote. I mean, actresses don't often get to say this many words on camera, let alone three of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's Kelly's appreciation and uh, for for women and her friends that this that you know gave birth to this idea. Right. Well, do you, there are kind of long stretches of dialogue in the movie and I was wondering how it was shot I mean because when you think of movie acting it's all kind of stops and starts were you able to kind of build up a, a rhythm and play the scenes out Here, yes very much so in fact we rehearsed it like a play which you don't ever get to do really we we had a couple of um days just working out all of the um blocking also because we didn't have the time or the money to do it otherwise but there were some 10 page scenes and Carrie very specifically had kind of we rehearsed them as a whole so we knew the entire way that the, that it would go blocked it in a rehearsal hall and so that when we got to the set we weren't wasting any time figuring that out we didn't have that kind of time mm-hmm. so um you know the first scene I think is a 12 page scene or something like that and we had 4 days or 3 days to shoot it so we you know knew where everything was going and then would get to the set and and run we ran as much as we could of the scene all the way through um each time we were in a different location and the locations were kind of built into 10 to 12 page scenes each one of them so we would take a run at that scene they weren't necessarily in chron- chronological order but we did get to do a full you know a full on run of it and then we would start breaking it into pieces well, when, when you're, and that's extremely rare, I would imagine. Yes, the, totally the, rare, yeah. very rare. But when you're working on a on a strict kind of uh, shooting schedule for for an independent film of this nature, I mean, do you feel satisfied after a day's work, or do you feel like there's always, uh, you wish you had more time to explore more possibilities? Oh, it was like a celebration every day that we got finished what we were supposed to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it was like an engine running all day long between Carrie and me. I think we, you know, one we knew I, we knew what we would have to accomplish in each day and how hard that was going to be. So it was like breathing a sigh of relief after each day when we were like, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. You know, because it was a, a, an incredible thing to accomplish. Yeah. Um, And then, of course, we were like, oh, my God, what about tomorrow? Oh, my goodness. And it was usually at about 4 o'clock in the morning when we were wrapping. So it was like, oh, 
<laughs> oh, my goodness sakes. And how do you come down from the day to be able to rest to actually get enough energy? I don't know if she or I don't know if any of us slept for a month, in, including yeah. <laughs> including my husband. <laughs> Um, it was so. It was a. It was a whirlwind of 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 energy and. Um, but yes, we celebrated. That's one thing Carrie and I really loved to do, and are similar in that when we accomplished something, we would. We felt we felt great about it. We knew what we were tackling, and so every time that day would. You know, we oh, we got it. It was like such a God. Okay, great, great, great. We did it. You know, we did it. Cause it was such a hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Before I let you go, I want to ask one question, kind of about the nature of a film set. Uh, because from hearing you just describe this experience of, of shooting this film, I mean, I would imagine you guys were a very close-knit group during this yeah. process, and it worked very intensely to get this project done. Is it strange to kind of leave after that process is over? Uh, it, you know, you work so intensely for such a short burst of time, and then the experience is over, and you go your separate ways. Well, you know, we're all friends, so it's not um, a departure like, okay, I'm never going to see you again. And I just think I probably smelled so bad uh, from cigarette smoke <laughs> and b- booze from the floor of the bar and um, the stink of a rest uh, of a east side bar filled with 50 people jam-packed in there for 10 days that I think we all wanted to get away from each other for just about a minute. <laughs> and <laughs> we, of course, have all stayed and are very good friends. I'm, I, you know, teasing, but I, but that was, uh, no, I think we all needed a vacation after that. It was, uh, that last scene uh, that ends in the bar was a very intense experience that I know Marsha and I at least were bruised from head to toe um, but that was a stinky, stanky bar, and we were all like, "Okay, see you later. We're gonna go take a shower." 